Hi, I'm Dr. Morgan. I'm a family nurse practitioner. Welcome to Health Talk. Today, I will be talking to one of my very, very dear patients, Mr. Patel, and we will be bringing awareness to diabetes um, to see what it is like from the patient's per perspective living with diabetes. As providers, we treat these conditions and we are looking to see how we can improve their lives, but we do not know what it is like behind the scene. So I operate a diabetes clinic. It's called Abigail Healthcare Diabetes Clinic. And this clinic allows me to treat patients who have insurance, some who with um, limited insurance, some with no insurance, some with patients who are living in um, underserved community, community that um, the, the income level is low. So these patients um, will come to this um, center to be treated. Some of the insurances that I take, I take United Healthcare, I take Medicare. I'm in the process of getting um, credential with WellMed and Aetna, Cigna, and some other commercial insurance. So some of my insured patients, most of them are like Blue Cross, Blue Shield, but you know they were with me before they got that insurance and they do not want to change their provider. They already develop a relationship with me. So they would pay me cash for my visit and use their insurance to pay for their labs and um, their medication. So um, diabetes is a, a very, very serious illness and a lot of Americans, a lot of people around the world um, are impacted with this illnesses. As a Jamaican, um, I have first an experience with this because I have a strong family history of diabetes. And um, the statistics show that um, um, Native American, um, Hispanic, African American people have a higher incidence of diabetes. So sometimes we have control of this and sometimes it's all a genetic um, issue why we are impacted with this diabetes. So Mr. Patel, welcome to Health Talk and you're gonna tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you very much. Good morning. Um, I'm currently 62 years of age. Um, I first was diagnosed with diabetes back in 2014. Um, but prior to that, I had incurred so many health issues such as gout, inflammation, weight gain. And so um, my uh, issues back then uh, were not uh, addressed right away until I started seeing a doctor. Um, but prior to that, I had a very healthy life, led a very active lifestyle as far as uh, physical fitness, eating correctly, um, working, getting adequate sleep and things to that nature. So. Um, when uh, I was first uh, diagnosed with diabetes, um, I wasn't really shocked, but um, I, I, I knew that it was a, a disease that was uh, becoming very predominant um, in the world and in the United States. So I took active measures to start addressing this uh, uh, issue. Did you have a family history of diabetes? No, I did not. Wow. So it was just the weight gain that um, was the only thing that was really different apart from the gout. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What symptoms were you having when you were, what that brought you to see a doctor? Um, most of my symptoms uh, were ex excessive tiredness, um, constantly being sleepy during the daytime, um, extremely thirsty, even though I drank uh, constant liquids, but uh, I could have increased my intake on water, which I, I never did back then. I was more soda related. Um, I had the weight gain. And then of course, uh, my vision started, I started having issues as far as uh, blurriness goes. Most of my patients who are diagnosed with diabetes tell me that they have cotton mouth. And this cotton mouth is a dry mouth, a dry tongue, and no matter how much they drink water, they're just always thirsty. So you were having that symptom. My cotton mouth issues were not uh, that great. Um, I would have them every now and then, but um, I would say maybe one or 2% of my issues were related to cotton mouth. So um, it didn't really affect me like it does most people. Okay. What has been your journey like living with diabetes in, in terms of coping psychologically? 
Um, psychologically, I handled it very well. Um, I've always been a strong individual uh, with a strong mind. I've always th thought positive of everything. Um, so that helped me as far as my journey goes with it, um, um, with diabetes. I was never angry, never depressed or anxious or upset that I had it. Um, and it didn't deter my lifestyle. I kept living my lifestyle to the best and uh, doing what I needed to do to make sure I tried to get healthy again. Well, you seem to have a very positive outlook in life because a lot of times people are diagnosed with a condition. They go into depression, they have anxiety. They just can't cope with the fact that they know that they have this illness. So it is really, really good that you have a positive outlook to allow you to accept the situation that you're in and seek help and have this positive outlook and that attracts a positive outcome as well. Yes. What has been your biggest challenges living with diabetes in, in terms of the discipline in adjusting to lifestyle, taking new medication, affording the medication, or having access to health care? Um, as I stated, my lifestyle didn't change. Um, I kept doing what I enjoyed doing. And I think that was the, the biggest thing that helped me get through this. If I focused that the minute I was diagnosed with diabetes and, and, and made that the main issue, I think mentally and probably physically and psychologically, I would have probably gone into a depressive uh, state of mind, but I never did that. I stayed positive about it. I did some research. I um, uh, learned more about this disease and I tried to take a more proactive approach rather than a, you know, a, a reactive approach to it. Um, my biggest, biggest challenges were the medications that I was taking. Initially, when a medication was given to me, such as metformin, it did a great job. Um, but eventually, some of the side effects started taking a huge toll on me. Um, like, such, for example, having to constantly go to the restroom um, and especially being afraid to leave the house because if you're in a vehicle and you're traveling somewhere far, you would have to make constant stops just to you know, accommodate my, my need to go to the restroom. So that was, that was one of my biggest challenges with the medication. Um, even though it did improve, improve my blood work uh, results when, when the lab test came in. Um, the other thing was uh, some of the med medications that were suggested to me, they were very ex expensive. Um, I was given uh, Zigduo, which did a great job, but the price range for most consumers was just outrageous, even with insurance. Um, so that, that uh, made it very difficult for me. And then as far as uh, access to health care, um, that was okay with me until I had to go see a specialist where the uh, uh, visiting charges were, were very high. So I had to make a decision. Do I want to follow through with this or go back to my primary care med doctor and let them know that, hey, I don't want to see the specialist because of the extreme cost involved in it. Well, in treating diabetes, we usually send patients to a specialist whenever their glucose is out of control. And we have tried everything and it's not really responding to therapy. So once you go to that specialist, they, they do some blood work, look to see what's going on, check to see if the pancreas is working because sometimes these um, pills stimulate the pancreas to produce more insulin. So if the pancreas is burned out, then those medication will not work anymore. And once they identify the reason why you're not responding to medication or to see if you're not on adequate medication or adjust the medication, change it to a different brand, and you're responding, they send you back to your primary care doctor to continue with that management. So it's not like you go to a specialist and you have to see an endocrinologist for the rest of your life to manage your diabetes. Primary provide primary health care providers are quite capable in managing diabetes like myself. So I see what you're talking about in terms of the cost of the medications. And you have seen where there are newer medications and now we have these once a week injection, which I've introduced you to. And we're trying to see if we can source this to the best of our ability to, you know, to make it affordable to you. But um, the drawback to medication like um, Monjaro, which is popular out there, you have to have commercial insurance. At some point it was being um, allowed with coupon and the patient were paying $25. That has changed. 
And I would like to see a medication like this be available and affordable to patients who do not have commercial insurance. And it's really, really good. It helps with weight loss and it helps to control the, the blood glucose as well. So in the meantime, while we're waiting to see if, there, if these medications will become available to patients who do not have insurance, I still have to keep my patients on oral medication some of my patients on insulin because when the when the pancreas burns out the oral medication doesn't work anymore and you find that you might have to go on to insulin which is not a popular option for patients in you're taking insulin how do you feel about injecting yourself because some patients cannot inject themselves with insulin Initially, when I first started uh, taking insulin, yeah, the biggest issue was was uh, poking myself, and it would sometimes hurt because you weren't used to it. Um, uh, but over the years, as I've been on insulin, I've, I've acquired a, a, a good way of, 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 of poking myself. Um, the other problem sometimes I incur every now and then is when I do inject myself, sometimes you can feel the insulin as it's going in burning you, and that only lasts for maybe three, five, seven seconds at the most. And then after that, you're good to go. But um, as far as the just injecting myself, that uh, I've pretty much uh, accepted that and, and adapted to it. Okay. So for me, I'm at home and sometime I'll prepare my breakfast and I get a phone call and I completely forget that I was about to eat. Uh -huh. Do you have that problem at home? You have given yourself insulin and then you completely forgot that you haven't eaten? No, I've never, I've never done that. Unless, um, if if I've been invited uh, to go to a restaurant and join somebody for dinner, um, then I, I may miss that insulin at that point. But I would say I have a very ninety eight, ninety nine percent success rate as far as uh, making sure I take my insulin. No, Mr. Patel is a patient that every doctor would love. This man is very, very disciplined, very dedicated. He would bring me logs of his glucose, uh, blood pressure reading, what medication he's on, what his numbers, what his last A1C was. He's very, very disciplined in terms of managing his condition. And one of the things that as providers we aim for is to educate patients to take care of themselves at home because you only see us for 15 minutes in the office, but you have to live with yourself and you have to be responsible to be compliant with the medication compliant with your diet do your exercise and do what you what is required for you to remain healthy in terms of your lifestyle um are you consistent with um exercise your diet because i know diet is a very very strong point where a lot of people fall out and then their glucose level go up yes um Addressing the first issue as far as um, uh, my lifestyle and exercise, I during the winter months was my downfall. Um, whenever the weather was very gloomy, rainy, and cold, I very I my exercise was very limited. Um, so I would stay inside the house most of the time, which was not good and not healthy. But now that the weather during the spring, summer, and fall months has improved greatly, I walk at least three times a day. Um, a, a big plus is I have two small dogs, so I always have to take them for a walk. So that also gives me exercise at the same time. And then I do keep a, a, a bicycle in the garage. So in the at late afternoon, evening hours, I go ride my bike around the neighborhood, which uh, helps me burn off excess calories and, and keeps me in shape as well. So diet wise, um, is it difficult to maintain a low carbs diet, low fat diet? Um, as far as the foods go, yes. But what I have uh, done over the last, uh, within the last six months to to a year, I've increased my intake on uh, on the uh, produce side as far as the vegetables go. I've eaten more salads on a regular basis, more leafy greens, um, fruits to that nature, and try to stay away from uh, the carbs such as the breads and and the pastas and things like that. You still need carbs, but you have to know what type of carbs, like stay away from anything white, do stuff that's brown, because you still need that carbs to give you the energy that you need. And a lot of times, you know, people don't understand that it's not a no carb diet, it's a low carbs diet. Right, 
Okay. What would you like to see implemented at the government level to improve the lives of people living with diabetes? Um, I'd like to see the government work with the healthcare providers such as yourself um, to help patients uh, that have diabetes and give them a fighting chance to beat this disease. Um, I think one of the things the government needs to do, and this is going to be very tough, is I think they need to heavily tax corporations that are producing mass amounts of product that are not really good for the world or for, for Americans. Um, there are a lot, a lot of products out there. Um, and just, just to mention a few, like, like, a, like a soda, you know, there's plenty of sugar in it. I know they've come out with alternatives such as zero sugar, zero calories and that kind of product. But I think corporations need to take a more active approach to this because diabetes is very serious and is very, and is getting out of control. So I think if the government and corporations would work together, hopefully they can make an impact and or change in the consumer's lifestyle. Um, the other thing I'd like to see is the government work with healthcare providers. Um, let them know that, hey, we're here for you. If your patients who are in certain income levels are below the poverty line or just basically struggling tremendously, you know, allow the healthcare, give them, give samples to the healthcare provider or not only samples, but at least a three to six month um, uh, supply of medication to see if that actually is helping the, the, the patient. And if it does, that at least the government is getting a response back from the provider saying that, hey, this medication is working and this patient is recovering uh, greatly from this disease. So at least the government has some feedback on it. But, you know, um, I think there's a, there's a lot of uh, 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 parts that have to work together in order for this to succeed. Yes. Um, one of the things that I, I do, um, Mr. Patel, is applied for grants from various organization i've never been able to get these grants if i do get these grants it will help to reduce the cost of the office visit and my office visit isn't only 55 dollars but it all adds up when you put 55 dollars in addition to 30 dollars for your a1c 45 dollars for your um, routine labs and then 45 dollars for your your urine microalbumin that is to be done once a year it all adds up then you have to go to the pharmacy and pay for these medications. So it is very um, you know, challenging. So I try to get these grants and the grant will help to lower the, some of the costs. The samples really come from, I'm not sure what's happening with no. my picture here. The samples really come from um, the drug companies. So whenever we have samples in office, it's a drug company that come and deliver these samples to us. And then we use these samples in the patient. The drawback is that when we use samples in patients and it works, lower their glucose level, but then the patients cannot afford to buy that medication because they're not usually cheap. So we run into these issues. I really would like to see some more government help coming in. Um, Abigail Healthcare is a passion of mine. When I did my doctorate in nursing, I did it on type 2 diabetes. And when I see the large impact that it has on people, and when I look around and I see the amount of people who did not have insurance, or if they do have insurance, they have these high deductibles, I formed this nonprofit organization with the intention to help people. I'm doing what I can, but I wish I could do more, but I need more help to do more because Abigail Healthcare is largely funded by me, right? Because what I get from the revenue that I collect from patients cannot cover the overhead expenses of the clinic. So it's like a mission that I'm on and I need more people to contribute towards the clinic to make it um, possible for patients to really benefit from, you know, from the clinic. Right. So how was your experience been, what's the experience like working with me and uh, Abigail Healthcare? I've had a very good experience with you, Dr. Morgan. Um, I believe I met you back in around 2015, 2016. And um, we had a very good relationship from that start. Um, you were a very caring doctor. You're very passionate about helping the patient. Um, you listen to your patients. You're very understanding. And 
it makes me as a patient feel good that I have a doctor here that is concerned about my health issues and wants to get me back on a on the right track. So um, from then to all the way to, to today, I've always stressed to everybody, whenever you have a relationship with your primary care doctor, always be open with them, you know, ask them questions, give them as much feedback as you can, because the more they know about you, the more they can help you. Okay, great. So it was a pleasure talking to you today and we're going to wrap up. Is there anything else that you would like to add that I did not ask you? Um, basically to any other patients or new patients that, that are starting out with you, I would just ask them that to um, have a good relationship with your doctor. Don't hold anything back, you know, tell them everything. Like I said, the more they know, the more they can help you. And as a patient uh, like myself, um, if I may, I keep a binder. Um, of, of <laughs> I told you. And, and as you can see, this is a, a four inch binder. And this, this uh, talks about all my his, uh, medical history from 2012 all the way to today. I actually have a secondary binder as well. So um, if, like I said, if you keep that information and then you're questioned later on by the doctor, hey, did you ever have this issue two or three years ago? You can always revert to your binder and say, yes, I did. I, I, and then and show them the documentation. So always document your visits with your doctor. That way you know what's going on. And when you go back, you know, compare your numbers, where you were as far as weight, A1C and so forth to where you are today. And that gives you an idea of whether you're making any progress and what adjustments uh, you and your doctor need to make. I'm so proud of you, Mr. Patel. I know you're a very organized person, but taking charge of your health, that is what, if taking charge of your health was a person, that would be you. <laughs> well, thank you so much. That would be you. A lot of times patients come to me and they tell me that, oh, I was on a medication. And I said, what's the name? I don't know. We are living in an age where we have smartphones. There's um, storage on the phone where you can actually um, write that information. You can take pictures of the box of what you're taking, but these patients are telling me it's a little white pill. Most pills are little white pills. So we can't tell exactly what it is, especially when they had an allergic reaction to a medication and they don't know. So chances are that I might prescribe that same medication that you had an allergic reaction to. So these are the things that, you know, patients need to um, take note of to take charge of your health, know what you're taking, know the dosage of what you're taking. And you also mentioned about not holding back information from your doctor. Sometimes when the patients are not coming forward with the information, we, we know because if I'm giving you a, this medication at this dose and the last time your numbers were this and I increased the dose I'm expecting to see a better number and I'm seeing like a worse number. So it's either your pancreas is not working, something is not working, or you weren't taking the medication or you went off, you know, course with your diet. So it's important for patients to tell the truth. But I also understand that patients don't want to be judged because everybody wants to look good in the sight of their provider. But wanting to look good really comes off now to us as, okay, I need to do more. I need to make changes when really you weren't taking your medication. So I find that I tell my patients up front that, look, just be clean with me because when you tell me something and it's not adding up, I get very, very happy to increase your dose or to add a third medication or a fourth medication. Mm -hmm. And if you're not compliant with two medications already, you're not going to com be compliant with four medications. So they know, know that they should come to me and they will tell me like, man, I messed up. They start telling me <laughs> from right. the minute they, they come to the door, they say, boy, I messed up. I messed up big time. You're going to see it. So I prefer you messed up and tell me that you messed up. So what I usually tell patients, if you messed up, that's fine. We are human beings. Just start over again. Acknowledge that you mess up and you start over. And I usually use the experience as a child when you just start walking. What happened when you just start walking? You get up, you fall, you get up again, and you make more steps. And that's what life is about in every single thing. Exactly. We're going to mess up. We're going to make mistakes. Even as a provider, sometimes I wonder, did I make the right decision? Let me revisit this. 
And it's a process, a relationship that you have with this patient. Sometimes you might change a medication and let's see how it works and it just didn't work. And so, okay, you know what? We try this, that didn't work. Let's move on to this. I educate you about this new medication that I'm going to try. And, you know, we move on to there. But apart from me or a doctor prescribing medication, a big part, I think the bigger part is the patient managing themselves at home. And um, you are an example of a patient who really take charge of, of, um, of his life. And I really wish a lot of patients would do this. And I hope that when we post this video, other patients who are living with diabetes on, or any other condition will take this approach to take charge of their health history, get a copy of whatever record they need from their doctor, put it in a binder so that they know what's, you know, what's going on. Because right now in the world where the insurance dictates which doctor you see, you can have a very good relationship with a doctor, but your insurance just doesn't pay that doctor. That doctor is not in network and you just have to find another doctor. You're going over, you need your record, even though the doctor, the new doctor will send for some record from the previous doctor, but you as a patient want to know that you know what's going on and you have your record. And I really commend you for that. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. So this is Health Talk. Anybody who wants to contribute towards um, Abigail Healthcare and helping people living with diabetes, you're free to do so. You're free to reach out to me and do so. Um, this is a safe space where we talk about health. And I really commend Mr. Patel for coming forward. I know it's a very sensitive issue to talk about your health, um, you know, publicly, but each one, teach one, and you are an example of somebody who come forward to give information. So let me as a provider know what it is like from behind the scene in treating patients. Yes. And I hope all the information I have provided will help other patients as well um, to better, better their lifestyle. Because if we don't take or are, are not proactive today, there may not be a tomorrow. So the best thing is take action right now with yourself and with your doctor and the promises a better lifestyle down the road. Okay, thank you so much. So I'm gonna wrap up now. This was Mr. Patel, my patient, so I'm living, my patient living with diabetes and I'm Dr. Morgan. Have a great day and thank you so much for joining me, Mr. Patel. Thank you, you're very welcome. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.